got me crying before I even start speaking. <laughs> well, good morning, everybody. Um, as Lance mentioned, my name is Catherine Van Weingarten, and I have the privilege and the honor of sharing with you this morning. Um, before I begin, I just want to again say Happy Mother's Day to all of you who are mothers out there. And I always make a special point to acknowledge that sometimes motherhood doesn't look um, like that. I know some people would long to have children running around, or some people weren't able to have children of their own, but I always want to encourage you and say that sometimes motherhood just simply looks like investing in someone. Sometimes by accident, by losing your parents, suddenly big sister or big brother takes on the role of motherhood. And so I just want to extend a happy Mother's Day to every woman out there, and I just pray that you are honored and blessed today. So as Lance mentioned, um, this summer I have the opportunity of doing an internship. Actually less than, or just over 48 hours from now, I will be getting on a plane and moving to Central Africa, to Cameroon. I have actually a map up there you can see. Um, so I'll be doing an internship with Wycliffe Bible Translators. And for those of you who don't know what Wycliffe is or what they do, um, their mission is getting God's word and the gospel out to every nation, every tribe and tongue in a language that they understand, in the language of their heart. And so this is usually a 10 to 15 year um, project because it's not just going in and um, kind of observing for a few years and stalking them and writing it down and saying, here's a Bible, bye. <laughs> um, to do this, you have to live as part of the community and understand how the language works and understand all of the, um, just the nuances and everything that the language carries. And then, um, and then from that, we'll start to figure out which writing system would, will best represent the language if it's not written down yet, and then you can develop um, literacy in the community, because um, all of the research actually shows that um, if you learn to read and write in your first language and understand how words and how writing works, then you'll be way more successful in learning a second language. Because in Africa, for example, a lot of the schools are in English or French in an international language that has no connection with the, with the children themselves. Um, and part of the, the importance of doing this besides bringing the gospel. It also helps with government relations with the community. If their language is written and they say, I have a real language, um, it validates them and the government recognizes them. And so it gives these people an identity. Um, and I'll talk about this a little more later on, but just the really cool part of the way that Wycliffe does this is by living as the community, living within the community and getting the community to teach you their language, it becomes a communal project. And the community learns, the people who are working with you to translate are learning how to do this so that when the project's done, they have the tools to go do this for neighboring um, communities. And it's, it's cyclical, it keeps going. Um, and because everybody in the community has taken part in it, once they have the word of God, it's not just a book that is there, it's something that they say, I helped put that together, and it's much more incentive for them to read it. Um, yeah, so I asked Lance if I could share about that because the church has been so supportive and um, just encouraging me and supporting me financially. And then also God just kind of laid something on my heart that I wanna share with you guys. And um, yeah, it's a little bit about the importance of the word of God and how he can use it to direct our steps. So for many of you who know, I've been a part of the New Covenant family for just under 10 years now. Um, many of you have watched me grow and learn and watched me make my fair share of mistakes, <laughs> um, always meeting me with grace and ultimately just to pursue what the Lord has for me. I'm not by any means um, a preacher or pastor. I don't have credentials to be speaking, but I just pray that you would hear my heart in that it may encourage you, it may challenge you to take steps of faith, or it may just um, remind you of when you were in my spot and just cause you to thank the Lord for his faithfulness in, um, in your own life. So to start off, I wanted to talk about the importance of the word of God itself. So I just wanted to read 
a little bit of the word of God, about the word. So in Proverbs 30, verse 5, it says, Every word of God proves true. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. In Psalm 119, verse 105, it says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. In Hebrews 4.12, in the New Testament, it says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than, a two, than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. That sounds pretty important to me. I don't know about you, but that sounds quite convicting. And again, in the New Testament, Matthew 24, 35, it says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Amen. So from this, um, from this, we can gather that God's word is actually threefold. We get the living word, which is Christ, which is Jesus, um, John 1, the Gospel of John, talks all about how in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word is Jesus Christ. And then we have the spoken Word, which is God's spoken Word to us, to his children, to the believers. And we also have the written Word, which is the Bible. And it's a document um, recording all of this, recording the living Word, his life, um, and recording the spoken words of God. So the Bible, in a little snapshot, um, it answers, I'm trying to think which is beginning or end for you guys, because it's the opposite. Um, but the Bible is, um, is the book, God's word that he's given to us that talks about the beginning of creation, where everything came from, what his intention was for his children to live in perfect shalom with him. It talks about how we messed that up, um, and why we need God, why we need a Savior. Through the whole um, Old Testament, the New Testament talks about Christ, that he is our Savior, he is our only hope, and how from that place of grace and of salvation we are to live. That's why the verses talk about the Bible guiding our steps and God's word guiding our steps until Christ comes and returns to restore all things. So don't take my word for that as, oh, now I don't need to read the Bible. That's just a little overview of, <laughs> um, of what it is. So the Bible is God's way, that being said, the Bible is God's way of speaking to us. But it also teaches us how to speak to God. And a few weeks ago, Pastor Lance was talking um, to us about prayer and how we can address God as our Father. Um, we can address him by name as Yahweh. And he, um, we learned how to pray as Christ gave us an example when he taught us the Lord's Prayer, um, what kind of things to pray about, how to talk to the Lord. And that all made sense, and none of us ever thought twice um, about it because we read that in English. No one ever thought to themselves, oh, does God speak my language? If I speak to him, is he going to understand? I bet most of us haven't thought about that. So I want to show you, I want to take you to Psalm 17, verse 6, that says, I call upon you, for you will answer me. O God, incline your ear to me and hear my words. So that brings us to the question, does Yahweh speak your language? Yes, no matter what language you speak, he created it. He created it as part of himself, as an extension of his creativity. Um, the more you study language and the more you see just the complexity and the systems that go into it, um, it's just mind-blowing to see that God took so much time and care and effort to create that. And so Wycliffe Bible Translators was started by John Wycliffe when he was working in South America in the 20th century, and someone asked him, if your God is so great, why doesn't he speak my language? There's never a more humbling question than that. Um, and since then, he's worked, to, um, he's worked and established an organization to bring the word of God, a Bible, the theologically sound that makes sense um, to every language of the world. I mentioned a few weeks ago that um, Pastor Lance was talking about how to pray and how to address God as Yahweh. 
He mentioned that Yahweh is mentioned just over 7,000 times in the Bible. I got goosebumps because I realized that right now, today, there are just over 7,000 languages that are spoken in the world. God's name is mentioned at least once in the Bible for every tribe and tongue and nation and community, every person to at least know it once. I just thought, wow, okay. <laughs> then I asked Lance if I could speak. <laughs> Sorry, just the next one. Jesus' last words to us before he ascended to heaven are known as the Great Commission, which you can see at each of the four Gospels, but I'm going to read it from Matthew. So Matthew 28, 18 to 20 says, And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing the name of baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. So we are left with this great commission. This is our instructions for how to live until he comes home, until he comes, sorry, to restore our home and to bring us into um, eternity with him. And so I just want to share a little bit of how the Lord has brought me to now working with Wycliffe. Um, I'll just say straight up, it was never part of my plan. <laughs> I saw this great commission, uh, well, just growing up in Sunday school and in church, I've learned this. Um, and I always thought, okay, I'm going to go to university, I'm going to get married, I'm going to go to grad school, I'm going to get a really good job, I'm going to have seven children and, and stay at home and raise them all. And I really believe motherhood is one of the highest callings the Lord can give you. So I wasn't joking about seven children. <laughs> um, but that was my plan. And I went to, I've been studying at Tyndale University in Toronto. Um, and I went there with the intention to study music and French, and I was going to teach. Um, and I really felt that the Lord had called me there specifically. And then I got a little curveball because they don't have a music program or a French program. <laughs> and then I went studying linguistics, and I thought, okay, that's related to French. It, it will help me learn language. Okay, I'll take that. A week before I was supposed to start, they called me and said, there's no linguistics program. It was canceled. And so all of these things in my mind, I was like, Lord, this just doesn't make sense. Um, and the years passed by, and I just, th there was a linguistics program. It was reinstated, praise the Lord. Um, but this plan that I had, I just saw it crumbling. I almost saw my identity in this plan of success and all of these things that I lost sight of what the Lord really had for me. And so I thought, okay, study linguistics, finish, get my degree. It all makes sense for where I think I'm headed. But the Lord was really like, uh-uh. Actually, it's making sense for what I have for you. And so this opportunity to work with Wycliffe for the summer and to learn from them um, came up. And, and I love adventure, so I was like, okay, I'm, I'll do it. It's a good travel experience. And then I really had to stop. I had to pray for, it was just over nine months that I prayed and said, Lord, this, this sounds cool, but I don't want to do this for the wrong reasons. Um, I just asked him to evaluate my heart. I asked him just to help me trust him because if I were to do this, it means giving up my summer. It means not working and paying for this, this thing. So financially, that was a ton of stress on my mind, and I was just like, Lord, okay, okay, I'm just going to try and trust you. I'm just here to tell you a testimony of how once I surrendered to the Lord's plan, he provided every single thing that I needed and then some. Every single dollar that was needed for this, this internship was provided and then some. And then after that, um, my laptop broke in to do linguistic work um, in this day and age, a lot of the programs run through a laptop. And I thought, Lord, like, okay, like you provided, that's awesome, but now what? I, I had my um, fundraiser here in New Covenant. New Covenant was so, so supportive, and you guys have been wonderful. And week after week, I would come in and people would say, the Lord told me to give you this, and they'd hand me checks for different amounts, and it was incredible. 
So I added up the whole total, and I added the cost of my laptop, and I was $400 short. I kid you not, less than 12 hours later, I walk into here, and someone in this congregation, the Lord spoke to them, and they walked up to me for, with a check for exactly $400. Exactly. And God deserves the praise for that one, because that did not make sense. <laughs> So it has just been so, so cool. And I just want to, sorry, I'm just going to try and stop crying. I want to take you to, back to a verse that I read earlier. And this is Psalm 119, 105 again, that says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And now as a linguist, sometimes I overanalyze scripture and I look at the grammar and I ask myself, now if we moved the comma, would it make the sentence different? And just I overanalyze things. Um, but with this verse, it stuck out to me that first, his word is a lamp to my feet. If you look down at your feet, you see two feet and maybe a little bit around it, but you don't see the whole plan. So his word is a lamp to our feet, guiding us in the decisions to make. And he might say, okay, see this area here? That's safe to step in. Good. Next foot. This whole area. Okay. I think that if, if at the very beginning he lit up our whole path, many of us would probably turn around and run away screaming. I don't, I mean, God bless you if you have the faith to go jump right in, but... <laughs> But I think it's true, many of us in our human reaction is, is to turn the other way or to present excuses and say, Lord, that doesn't make sense, like that's impossible. Because we forget that we serve the God who does the impossible. I wanna leave one thing with you. In my experience in the past year as I've prepared for this, I haven't even gone and done what I believe the Lord is calling me to yet. But there has been nothing sweeter than knowing that I'm exactly where the Lord wants me at this time. Regardless of what that looks like, for some people it may be parenthood, or it may be running a business, it may be all these different things, it may be preaching, it may be teaching, um, but there's been nothing sweeter than the peace that comes with knowing that you're available to do what God has created you on purpose to do. And so I just challenge you this morning, if you've been maybe like me, you had this set plan and you're stubborn, but it's not working, or you know what the Lord's calling, to you, calling you to do, and maybe you're resisting or running, I challenge you to just make that surrender right now um, and to just follow him in it. I promise you, he will provide He will be with you. He will go before you. He will go behind you. But there has been no greater blessing. And so, New Covenant, I just, I thank you again for all of the support that you've given me. Um, so far, I really look forward. I, come, I go with expectancy that I will come home with testimony of the Lord's faithfulness to share with you. And I just ask one more thing of you guys is um, that you would just cover me in prayer for the next um, three months as I'm gone. Um, I've left just a, a sign-up sheet for prayer for certain days or certain times um, at guest services if you feel inclined to partner with me in bringing the gospel to the nations of the world um, through prayer. Because this project is something that leaves the word of God um, with the community. It's something that lasts long after we've left, gone. It's the foundation of the church for generation to generation and generations to come. And so our enemy doesn't like that. And a lot of times there's spiritual warfare against people who are working with Wycliffe. So my final request to you is, um, if you'll just partner, partner with me in that way. Um, and as I said before, I just challenge you to obey what the Lord is calling you to and trust in him. And if you go, you can make a kingdom footprint. I think we talk about our... I think it's carbon footprint. I should have Googled that before I came up here. <laughs> But all the resources that you use in, in the world and the impact, um, usually in a negative way, that you had on it by your, your life. But I want to challenge you to make a kingdom footprint, something that lasts far beyond um, when you've gone, something that makes an eternal difference, whatever that may look like.
And so at this time, I want to invite up Esther, who also has an incredible story to share with you about the plan that we make for our lives, and then sometimes a different direction, but wonderful direction that the Lord takes. So would you join me in welcoming Esther? Esther.